Good morning, Smoky Mountain. God is good all the time. Amen. God bless y'all for being here this morning. If you're watching us online, we're sure glad you're tuning in as well. If you're visiting with us today, we're glad you're here. Uh, welcome. Uh, and the chairs in front of me, there should be like a little blue card. If you could just take a moment and fill that blue card out, drop that in the offering plate when it comes by. We sure would appreciate that. And just give us a, a kind of, know of your record of being here and kind of from time to time uh, send you information about what's happened at Smoky Mountain. If you're a regular attendee, Need to update your personal information or have a, a, a prayer concern, be sure to put that on that uh, card as well, and we'll make note of, of those things for, for sure. Um, many of you were here last night. We had, we had a great dinner, a great community dinner, and a lot, lot of food. We had, we had more food than, than, than we needed, and uh, some of us are wobbling around a little bit this morning, I think. But uh, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, those of you who spent hours here yesterday afternoon preparing, stirring, cooking, donations that were made, if you know you made cakes and pies and brownies and stuff, just thank you. It was a good day, and we had some people in the community as well as some, some fellowship with our, our Hispanic brothers and sisters as well. So I just want to thank you all for that. I think it was a, it was a good evening. Amen? Amen? A few announcements this morning. Uh, this, this, this week is Thanksgiving, so we won't have, um, we won't have Wednesday night Bible study just because a lot of you will be, have family coming in or be getting ready for, for, for Thanksgiving. So uh, we'll take this week off and then we'll come back next week and uh, continue watching season two of The Chosen in our, in our discussion time as, as well. Um, as most of you have heard me say in the past, um, I didn't know if Chosen was going to be in the local theaters for season three. It is at the Forge Theater this weekend. Uh, I think today it's showing at like 4.15 and, and 1 o'clock, 4.15 and 7.30. So I think we're thinking about going this afternoon as well. So those of you who want to go see season three, episodes one and two, it is at the Forge Theater. It's only five bucks there, so that's a good deal for a, for, for, for a movie. And it supports, uh, supports what they're doing with that, that cause. Um, there are several, um, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of announcements there related to Christmas and stuff. Um, we still have a few open slots for the uh, bell ringing. So if you might be willing to help out bring the, the bell for Salvation Army in front of a Hobby Lobby, we got a couple open slots for that as well. We are collecting uh, winter coats, you know, uh, new or gently used winter coats for SMARM. There's a big old wrapped box back there. We'll be collecting those through, um, through uh, December uh, 4th. So if you want to donate to that cause, uh, that, that would be great as well. And then, of course, we got the angel tree started uh, this today as well. And I think there's only about three or four left. I will have more angels. If you didn't get one yet, I will have more coming in um, later this week. I think about three left back there. Make sure if you took an angel um, that you sign the clipboard of what who, the angel you took. Because I just have a record of, if you didn't sign the clipboard, make sure you sign that clipboard on the way out. So I have a record of, 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 of who got what angels. So, um, um, and yeah, like I said last year, try to be generous. Um, try to get as much as you can on that list because... For some of those kids, that will be all they'll get for Christmas, all right? And so uh, that, that, that will be their Christmas. So I encourage you to try and be as generous as possible. And I, something I want to encourage, I know some of those lists have a lot on it, and, and some of the, the items that they want are maybe a little bit expensive, or, or maybe one person can't handle everything on the list. Maybe two of you can go together and uh, split uh, the, the needs for, for a child. And maybe, it's, maybe two or three of you can go together. And, uh, and try and get all the gifts for them. So I'd encourage you to do that. So if you, if you think you can't handle a kid by yourself, find a buddy and uh, go shopping together and uh, try and try and get as many things on that list. And, and uh, the families and the, the, are, will be very grateful for that. They were so grateful last year and, uh, and so thankful for what we did and, and blessed those families. And, uh, and, uh, if, if, and the, day, the Christmas party for that will be Wednesday, December 14th. I would encourage you to come out that night. Go, go to the meet us at the Boys and Girls Club and, and watch the kids get their gifts and interact with the kids, and you will be blessed by, by that experience as well. So, um, so uh, the, keep that in mind. And, um, and also in the bulletin, there's, there's a little uh, insert about the uh, Women's Outreach Ministry Christmas Party on uh, Monday, December 12th, and there's some information on that, ladies. You can read that and, uh, for what you need to, 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 to bring and, and prepare for that, that, that night as well. And I guess you can see, see Jennifer or um, Elaine for, for more information, correct? Okay, sounds, sounds good. All right, and also for Sevier County Food Ministries, for the month of November, we're collecting instant mashed potatoes, instant oatmeal, ramen noodles, and snack cakes. So uh, they, they also appreciate all that Smoky Mountain does for for them as well, and uh, so thank, on behalf of them, I want to thank you for, for that as well. Um, 
So today, uh, like last week, we do have a, have a, have a, have a guest speaker, uh, Mark Beggerly from Zimbabwe Outreach Ministries will be uh, speaking this morning and um, encourage you to, to give him some amens and hallelujahs and praise Jesus and, and all that sort of stuff. And Mark, I, I'll tell you, um, somebody a few weeks ago gave me this little uh, sign that says, can I get an amen? So if you're not getting enough response from the congregation, raise it up and you'll, you'll get an amen. All right. So, so, there, so there you go. So, uh, so I appreciate Look forward to hearing Mark. He was here last year about, about this time. And uh, I know he'll have a, a great report and a great, great message to bring us this morning. So uh, let's all stand. So have a word of opening prayer and we'll go into our, our time of worship. Father God, I want to thank you so very much for your goodness, your grace, your love. You've showed us in so many ways, Lord. We thank you for uh, the time of year. It's a season of Thanksgiving, God. And we really are, have so much to be thankful for, Lord. And just... Uh, uh, we're, we're blessed beyond, beyond measure. But, Lord, the, the greatest blessing, the greatest gift that you've given us, Lord, is the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, and the hope that we have in him, Lord. And if you did nothing else for us than that, than that God, then, then that's something that we should be thanks, so thankful for beyond, beyond measure, God. Uh, Lord, I, I just thank you for the time we have to get here today to worship you. And, and I pray as we come into this time of worship that as we sing, as we meditate, as we listen, as we fellowship around this, the Lord's table, as we fellowship with each other, uh, I pray that uh, we'll do it with the right attitude, right heart, that, that we'll bless you with how we worship and how we, how we conduct ourselves here today, Lord. I pray that your spirit will come move in and through this service and to teach us, remind us, encourage us, maybe in some cases rebuke us if we need to be rebuked, Lord. Uh, God, so we can live for you to bring glory to your name and gain to your kingdom. Uh, Lord, I just, I just thank you so very much for, for, for your love and your grace. I pray to be those who cannot be here with us today, those who are traveling, uh, those who are away from us. I pray to bring them back to us safely soon. Those who have traveled to the Smoky Mountains for a little vacation, a little, uh, little time with family, a little r and I pray their time here in the Smokies is, is a blessing, is restful, and uh, they go home re-energized and ready to, to go back home to serve you and serve their church and serve their community uh, as well, Lord. Uh, God, we love you. We praise you. It's in your precious son's name we pray, and all of God's people said. Amen. We're glad that... We're glad that I'm not, this is not on. Is it on? Yes. Yeah. It is? Okay. <laughs> We're glad to have you all here this morning. We have a lot of visitors. Uh, we have this lady next to us who is not a visitor, but she drove an hour this morning just to come and, and help me out and sing with us, and I appreciate that, and I know you all love her. And uh, I also have my son and his wife here from Florida, and I know there's many of you from here uh, even maybe further away than that. So we're real glad to have you this morning. This morning we're going to open up. The first song is going to be Love Lifted Me. And the um, song, I mean the song, the scripture I, brought, I thought of uh, was, of course, in the love chapter in Corinthians. And uh, we all know this verse pretty much by heart, but I'm going to read it because I'll miss a word if I don't. <laughs> and now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Thank the good Lord for God's love. All right. <laughs> Deep, deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Good help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling, in his blessed presence live. my soul's best songs, faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else 
song is count your blessings and and everybody knows that this is the week of thanksgiving and that's probably why we have a lot of extra here and we're so glad to have you but this song is count your blessings and we were counting our blessings in sunday school class this morning and most of us and well pretty much all of us were thankful for jesus and for our families um so sing this song this morning and as you sing think of the blessings that you have to count when upon life's pillows you are tempest-tossed When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, name them one by one And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done Count your blessings, name them one by one See what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen. name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through his loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. 
The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We'll gather soon where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, folks. Good morning, Mark and Helen. As for me, I never know when something will happen in my life that will remind me of the goodness of the Lord. About three weeks ago, I was in, uh, out in uh, our Kingston Pike at a place called Floor and Decor. And I had a very large order of tile to get and accessories. Tile for a master bathroom and the border and the trim and the, and the thin set mortar and the grout and, and all the accent pieces and in the guest bathroom we had tile and materials to get for that and then the kitchen we had tile to get for the kitchen for this job. I had a very long list and it was on a Saturday. It was very busy and someone knew just from the, my look that I really needed some help. <laughs> and this lady says to me, she says, I'm going to have her help you, sir. Do you need some help? And I said, yes, yes, ma'am, I do. And I looked over, and this lady was just finishing typing up an order. And she walked over to me, and she was very frail looking. And she was so frail that I, I said, um, ma'am, I said, I really have a long list of things here. And I said, um, I've got I, I've got to go all over this store. I need help doing some design to pick out the right tile to coordinate with the border and stuff. And before I could continue, this lady said, my name is Margaret. I'm 76 years old, and you're just a kid. I couldn't say anything. <laughs> and she knew I was kind of tied up, and she said, what's your name, sir? And I said, David. She said, well, David, I'm here to help you from start to finish. For the next two hours, that lady went from one end of the store to the other, they had a design center in the middle of the store where you brought tile and you put it together to actually see what your tile would look like. For two hours, we filled up three of those big flat carts with stuff. And when we got all finished, I said, ma'am, I said, God bless you. Jackie already mentioned uh, our Sunday school class this morning. It was a really good class. Rick wanted us to go around the room and tell what we're thankful for. And uh, when it got to me, I, I said I was thankful for the Lord and Jesus Christ in my life, and I said I'm thankful for my wife and for my family. But I couldn't say what I wanted to really say after that because of what I'm saying right now. And that is, I come up here to this table and I partake of this bread which symbolizes the body of Christ and I partake of this drink which symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ 
because I believe what Jesus said. And Jesus said, if you are my disciple, I'm with you from start to finish. Boy, I like that. I like it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being such a merciful God and sending your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. I thank you, Lord, because you said, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name.
was a man that asked Jesus Christ a question. What do I have to do? Jesus told him, go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. The man turned away. There was another man that Jesus said, come and follow me. Not only did he follow him, he said, Lord, half of every ha everything I have, I will give away. And if I've wronged anyone, I'll pay them back much, much more than I, than I wronged them for in the first place. See, it's not that we have to give up everything that we have. It's the attitude that we have towards the blessings that God has given to us in our lives. It's our attitude, what we decide. Don't let anyone coerce you into giving any certain amount of funds that you earn in your life. God wants you to give out of a cheerful heart whatever you would want to do with the attitude that would be pleasing to the Lord. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of offering here this morning. We pray that those that have the wherewithal to give would give joyfully. And those that don't, we pray that you would help us to realize who they are and be able to minister to them with a gracious attitude. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning. Are you excited to be here this morning? Amen. I am. I'm really excited to be here and to share with you uh, what the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you. I hope this morning that you will be encouraged, uplifted, challenged. Uh, my job is to convict no one. And if the Lord convicts you of something, well, I'm sure uh, this area right up here is for all of us to uh, change our hearts and change our minds. Amen. 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 So this morning, uh, we just want to thank you, Helen and I do, from Zimbabwe. Uh, you folks have been supporting us for some time now, so we want to say thank you to each of you for supporting the work in Zimbabwe. And Simba, our, our key African partner on that side, uh, he's an African son to me. Uh, he says, Mark, whatever you do, make sure that you tell the people who support us, thank you from us in Africa. So often they get bad press, you know. Everybody's got their hands out. I uh, know we have, we, Simba has learned through the years that a hand out and a hand grip is what we have to do uh, to get the work done for the Lord. And so all of us working together and then the grabbing hold of the gospel and taking the gospel overseas and, and Africans working that gospel uh, into the lives of their people is where we want to be. And so this morning, again, thank you. 
thank each of you for allowing, allowing us to be a part of you and you being a part of us in Zimbabwe. Today, uh, our challenge is going to be along some lines that might be a little bit different for you, but uh, we need to be challenged in a different day, so I, I, I time uh, away. So I'd like for you uh, to think about this. I want you to keep this in your mind and say this to yourself throughout this coming week. Lord, help me today to receive in the moment what you have for me. Lord, help me today receive in the moment what you have for me for me. I, I believe that's something that's missing in the church today. I believe that we tend to categorize our lives. I'm going to be at church today. I'm going to be at work tomorrow, and I'm going to be doing something else. But in all of our life, every moment of every minute of every day, we need to be asking the Lord, Lord, help me today. Receive in the moment what you have for me. And then the next thing I'd like for us to throw out the window. Uh, we've heard it. I've said it. You've said it. I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. That's a word that we don't need to be saying as Christian people because it is God who is working in us. It is God who makes us capable to do the work that we do. So it's not about me, I don't do that. It's about God doing whatever he's called me to do through me, and he has the power to do that. And we tend to look at ourselves and what we can do, and God says, no, 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 don't look at yourself, look at me. Stop saying I don't do that. And so we want to pick up in Romans chapter 1 this morning where Paul goes to Rome, the cesspool of iniquity. Here Paul is a guy, a man who understood what it means to be a sinner. He understood what it meant to be lost. He understood what it meant to know Jesus. He understood what it meant for his life to be changed by the power of Jesus. Their life, his life was no longer the same. He went to war against Jesus and he lost. And maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you're running a war against Jesus, and maybe you've decided that you know better than he does, and he's coming up to you in your life on a daily basis, and he's beginning to speak into your life so that you can see that he is in charge and that he wants to help you be more than you thought you could ever be. I believe that's what Paul was, a man who became a follower of Jesus and became more than he thought he could ever be. So we look at Paul. And he was changed, and so because he was changed, he went into Rome and said, Hey, if God can change me, then God can change anybody. And he went in with that confidence, and he went in knowing that that fact is true. I remember when I was growing up, uh, I, I played high school football, and after I had graduated, I had a, a game warden that went to his uh, shooting range, and he, ho he overheard some people talking about Mark Beggarly. And he said, um, you mean Mark Beggarly, the guy that played football at, in, in Springs Valley uh, when he was going to high school? And he said, yeah. He said, that guy, he's either dead or he's in prison by now. <laughs> and he said, that guy. He said, I know that guy. He says, it's a preacher and a missionary today. And you know what happened to their teeth? About fell out of their heads. Because the God had changed Mark beggarly as God changed you this morning and that is the power that we need to understand that understanding we need in the gospel to know that God is going to work through us and has already done a great work in us what do we need to do with that well let's begin reading in Romans chapter 1 verse 8 Paul says first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith has been reported all over the world. How is your faith being reported this morning? How is your faith being reported? At home, among your family, among your friends, in the workplace, when you're out playing, when you're talking, when you're watching TV. How is your faith being reported? I'm not talking about any faith this morning. I'm talking about a faith that follows the faith of Abraham. And you know what that faith looks like? In Romans chapter 4, he talks about that, doesn't he? He says, the faith of Abraham is like this. I believe in God, I believe in the power of God, and I believe that God has the power to do what he promised. Over 6,000 or 60,000, well, I have to change that now. I think it's 60,000 promises made in the scriptures that God has made to you and I. And we are recipients of that. 
What kind of faith are you walking in today? Is it the faith of Abraham? I believe God. I believe in the power of God. And I believe that God has the power to do what he said he would do. Is that the faith that you are walking in? Or are you watching TV and somebody puts a doily on their head and says, I'm going to pray for this and I'm going to send it to you if you send me $20 or $50? What kind of faith are you walking in today? If it's not the faith of Abraham, then it's no faith at all. We have to understand that. If it's not the faith of Abraham, then it's no faith at all. It has no power. But Paul was walking in the faith of Abraham. And we are people who need to walk in that same kind of faith. Lord, help me today to receive what you have for me in the moment. And Lord, help me never say again, I don't do that. Because it's God who's doing through me. Verse 9, God, God, whom I serve in my spirit in preaching the gospel of his son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers. At all times I pray that now, at least by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, what is that gift in that passage right there? That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's what? Pocketbook? By each other's great voice? By each other's wealth? No. By each other's faith. Paul wanted to impart to the people in Rome the same faith, the gift of the same faith that he had received that changed his life and change the world in which he lived and is changing the world in which we live today if we will just but stand up and walk by that faith in Jesus Christ. Paul understood that. And he said, this is the gift that we come to impart. And this morning, this is the gift that I come to impart, that I come to share, that I come to encourage us all in is the faith that we have in Jesus Christ, the faith of Abraham. Are you walking in it? Amen. Am I walking in it? Well, let's drop on down to verse 14, that famous passage of Scripture. I am obligated both to the Greeks and to the non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. Listen to me. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel. Look what he says here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel past, because it is the power of God present that brings salvation to everyone future who believe. Past, present, future. The gospel is alive in the past, alive in the present, is alive in the future. And God is wanting you and I to stand up with the faith of Abraham and proclaim the name of Jesus through that faith, through that power. Lord, help me today receive in the moment what you have for me. I believe that's a message that is lost today. And I believe we need to live it every moment of every day. Well, let's go on. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. That word revealed, a revelation, an unveiling of the person of Jesus Christ, a way of life that we are to live through faith in Jesus Christ is what he's talking about. It is revealed, unveiled, the person of Jesus. Have you ever wondered why in the world, after you heard somebody preach about Jesus, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus back to heaven, have you ever wondered why all of a sudden they say, I never knew that, I had never seen Jesus that way before? Why is that possible? Because through the gospel, the power of God intervenes and opens our minds to the person and the, the, the person of Jesus Christ, and we've never seen him before, and we go, wow, look who that is. That is the Son of God. You know what changes the world? It's not great music. It's not all the money that you could ever give the church. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ that changes lives. I remember one day I walked outside of the church in southern Indiana, and the preacher said, Mark, do you believe in Jesus? 
I said, well, yes, I do. He said, no, you don't. <laughs> he was a small guy, and I wasn't a Christian at that point. You know what kind of person I was. He looked at me and said, Mark, you're not. He said, you don't believe in Jesus. He said, when you do, you'll give your life to him. He said, you just believe a lot of good things about Jesus. You want to take in all the goodies about God, but not give your life to him. I'll tell you what, I changed my life. After a 14-inch snowfall, I gave my life to Jesus. I was baptized in the creek. The Lord helped the preacher. It was a cold day. I became a follower of Jesus Christ. Are you a follower of Jesus this morning? The righteousness of God is revealed. A right way of living, right way of talking, right way of living for God. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last just as it is written, the righteous will live by what? By faith in the Son of God. Lord, help me today receive in the moment what you have for me. Help me to never say again, I don't do that. I remember some years ago, uh, we were doing ministry in Zambia. First place that we went to. And there were some young men who came up to me. We were actually building our house. And these two young men were working for us. Their, their name was Fanwell and Kennedy. And Fanwell came up to me one day and he said, Mr. Beggarly, you've seen our, our little brother Chakupa. I said, yes. Now, Chakupa had a very bad cleft palate problem. And uh, when he would go to school, they would kick him. And when he would go to school, they would take his face and grind him into the ground and were just horrible to this young boy. And they said, Mr. Begley, we want you to fix our brother. <laughs> well, I can tell you what. You don't want me to operate on your face. I am not a surgeon. And they said, no, Mr. Begley, uh, we want you to fix our brother, Chakupa. I, I said, no, uh, I don't do that. They said, Mr. Begley, uh, we, we want you to fix our brother. I said, no, I, I don't do that. that, that that's not what I do. And they said it again, Mr. Bregaley, we want you to fix our brother Chakupa. And I thought, well, Lord, okay. If this is the direction we're going to go, then let's go. And I said, I'll tell you what. We'll go as far as the Lord will lead us. And so we did. And you know, Mindrew and Chakupa, Mindrew is Chakupa's father, and they had never had passports in their lives. They'd never been more than 50 miles from their home. It takes up to three, uh, one year to get a passport in, in Zambia. And we signed up. And you know what? We only had three months to get this passport because we were leaving. And uh, we signed up, and guess what? Passport came in, believe it or not. I remember uh, Mendrew came up to me, uh, and he said, Mr. Begley, he said, you know what? He said, I, I don't know where the receipt is that you gave me. And I said, Mendrew, you know that we have to have that receipt. And he said, yes, Mr. Begley, I know, but I don't have it. And we were waiting in line. We had gotten out of the truck, gone up the stairs, and waited in the line to get that passport. And I said, Mendrew, where is the receipt? And he said, Mr. Begley, I don't have it. And I said, Mendrew, you have to have it. And he says, I know, Mr. Begley, I know, I know, I know. I said, Mendrew, I'll go back down the stairs and back out to the truck to, get the, to see if I can find the receipt. Now, in the capital city of Lusaka, there's paper blowing everywhere. Okay? Everywhere. I go down the stairs, back out to the truck. I come back up and I say, Mender, have you found it? He said, no, Mr. Begley, I haven't found it yet. I said, Mender, you've got to find it. So I said, I'll go back out. To, I'll go down the stairs and back out to the truck and, and see if I can find it. And as soon as I stepped out that door, there was a little piece of paper that caught my eye. Boy, aren't you lucky. Well, if that's what you want to call it. I went over and picked that up, and that was the receipt that we needed to get that passport. And we went up to that counter, and we handed them that receipt, and the very person that signs every passport in Zimbabwe said, Mr. Beggarly, thank you. Thank you for caring for our people. Not too many people. Who are you caring for today? 
Oh, you say you don't do that. Who are you caring for today? I remember very well. I, when I told Mendrew, I mean, uh, when I told uh, Fanwell that we would do that, <laughs> I said, Lord, uh, what do I know about this? And you know what came to my mind? Our daughter Annette worked for a plastic surgeon in Knoxville, Tennessee at the UT hospital. We sent a picture to them, and that plastic surgery surgeon said, you know what? He said, I'll do the surgery for free. Not only that, Mr. Begley, we found out that the anesthesiology department said they would do their part for free. They said, not only that, Mr. Begley, but we, the hospital has said that if you can get them here, their stay in the hospital will be for free. Listen to me. A $30,000, $35,000 surgery, free, to two people out in the middle of nowhere, 8,000 miles away, who had never, ever been more than 50 miles from their home, God is moving. When we stand up and begin to say, God, okay, if this is what you want, you're going to have to do it, right? It's out of my realm. It's out of it, Lord. I remember coming back from town after getting those uh, passports. And I sat down with Mendrew outside the house, and there happened to be a plane flying over. And I said, Mendrew, how many people do you think we can get in that plane? He said, oh, Mr. Begley, oh, five. I said, Mendrew, there'll be over 400, maybe 450 people in that plane. Are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. He said, ah, oh, are you sure, Mr. Begley? Just like that. I said, yeah, I said it again. Are you sure? I said, yes, I'm sure. God is taking us somewhere. God is taking us somewhere. Do you believe that? Amen. It's time for us as the church to stand up and act like it. Lord, help me receive in the moment what you have for me today. Well, we had to go to the American Embassy to get uh, visas. So, uh, Mendrew and Chakupa and I went to the American Embassy and we sat down with the consulate and he said, well, Mr. Begley, can I help you? I said, well, yeah, here's the story. He said, well, Mr. Begley, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to let him go. He said, how many kids do you have? I said, eight, that's number nine, Hallelujah. No way. He said, what does he do for a living? I said, he's a farmer. He said, no way under the sun am I going to let him go. Now, you're probably thinking that's the best, that's the end of the story. Uh -uh. That guy, for whatever reason, uh -uh. because God moved in his heart, said, but. Now, that's a good thing, and it can be a bad thing, right? He said, but, Mr. Begley, I'll let him go if you'll take full responsibility. I said, I'll take full responsibility. We had to get plane tickets. Anybody here got $3,000 in your pocket? I don't see any hands going up. Got a missionary in front of you, right? <laughs> no hands going up. We had to raise $3,000 for tickets, plane tickets. I didn't have $3,000 in my pocket. Our first time on the mission field, we didn't have it. Well, guess what? Helen has a mother in southern Indiana. She starts calling all her friends. And you know, in a week, we had $3,000 for the plane tickets. Lord, help me. Help me to look past myself to see the power of God working. Well, isn't that amazing? I thought, well, hey, let's go to the British Airways. We're on a roll. Let's see if we can get it for free. I was one free. This is it. Free day. Free day. Let's go. We went up in there, and I sat down, and I told him the story, and she smiled at me. This lady says, Mr. Begley, we can't let you have them for free. She said, everybody wants a free ticket. She said, but we can do half price. I said, I'll take half price today. Half price. Well, it came time for us to leave, and Helen says, you know what? She said, this little boy is used to running around in the bush. And so when he has to go to the bathroom, what does he do? He just whizzes on a tree. And he makes all the grass green, right? <laughs> and I'll tell you what. He, uh, Helen says, Mark, he says, we're going to have to take some change of clothes for that boy. 
And so we did. And he, he, he had to learn when you go to the bathroom in the airplane. Y'all been on an airplane? Yeah, I've been on an airplane. You, you got to wait because you're going to wait if there's a line there. And he had to learn to wait in the line and then go relieve himself. And we, we lost two changes of clothes. Helen, being the good mother that she is, she said, let's take three. And so we got three, and we made it. Is God really concerned about two people? A young boy, six years old, 8,000 miles away? You bet he is. You bet he is. I remember the day after the surgery... This doctor did that surgery that should have probably taken two or three settings. He did it in one. And I remember going in and sitting down at the foot of the bed with Mendrew, and Mendrew had his arms around his son, and he was bawling like a baby. He said, Mr. Begley, I have a son now. I have a son now. I don't know what he thought he had. But let me tell you what God did. He changed his mind about his boy. He had a son. I remember when it was time to go back to Zambia. <laughs> I sat there in that airport and I was bawling like a baby. I said, Mender, I... I can't go back with you. Well, things have changed, you know. He said, yeah. He said, Mr. Begley, why do you worry? It's God who brought us here. It's God who will take us home. Before we left, I knew we weren't able to go back to Zambia because of the situation that was there. But there was a missionary that was there. And so he had to go pick Mendrew and Chikupa up from the airport. Now, when Mendrew's wife let them go, in her mind, she would never see them again. But she gave up her son and her husband for what she thought was going to be best for them. So I asked Mendrew one day, Mendrew, when you meet your wife, what will you, what kind of greeting will you have? <laughs> he said, ah, Mr. Begley, we will shake hands. I said, oh, okay, I hope, that, I hope you're good with that. And so the missionary goes and picks them up, and I said, tell me, what kind of greeting was that when they met? I was really curious. He said, well, he said, when... Uh, Mrs. Mendrew saw her husband and her son. She took off running. You know, like one of those movies, you know. <laughs> and she grabbed to hold him and her son, and she kissed him all over his face. No shaking hands, boy. She kissed him all over his face and kissed her son, and they had about a 45-minute drive back to their house, and the missionary says they never stopped talking about the wonderful things that God has done. Paul couldn't stop talking about the wonderful things God has done. Has God done something so amazing in your life? that you can't keep your mouth shut. Church. When God calls you the next time this week to do something outside your comfort zone, don't look around and say, hey, I don't do that. He's going to. Stand up in the faith of Abraham that we all here claim that we have. Stand up and move forward with him. 
because you will see the hand of God do things that you will never see your hands do on your own. I am not a surgeon, but God knows them. And he hasn't called you to do something that he is not willing to take you through the fire to get you the victory that he has already. Thank you, Mark. What is God calling you to do this morning? What is God calling you to do in this moment? Is there a decision you need to make this morning? Maybe it's the first time you sit and say that I, I believe in Jesus Christ and I want his power and I want him in my life. Maybe you need to recommit this morning. Maybe you want to become part of the ministry here at Smoky Mountain. We welcome that decision as we stand this morning and invite the worship team up. And I'm going to pray. And what, what is God calling you to do this morning? Let, let, let's, let's pray and and ask what God wants us to do. Father God, we thank you so very much for your goodness, your grace, your love. Lord, I thank you for Mark and his ministry uh, uh, there in Zimbabwe. Lord, and I pray your blessing upon what they're doing there. God, uh, Lord, we've been challenged here this morning to uh, answer the call you've put upon our lives, Lord. And God, we know that if, if it's a call that's come from you, that you've already got the whole plan figured out, just like you did of this, this, this young man who had to get his, 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 his face fixed, Lord. You had that whole thing planned out. It was just up to Mark and, and the, those people stepping in to what you had for them to do. God, I pray that we will step into what it is you're calling us to do, trusting, knowing that you're already 10,000 steps ahead of us. We just got to be obedient and answer your call here today, Lord. So I pray that we will be willing to do that this morning, God. We love you. We pray just in your precious son's name. We pray and all of God's people said, amen. amen. <laughs> Above all, as our God is good all the time. Amen. If you all be seated for a moment, Mark, Helen, I need you to come on up here for a second. 
we got another presentation we want to make here today. So I'm going to turn this over to Elaine and uh, go from there. <coughs> Hello. <laughs> um, as part of the missions committee that we have here at church, uh, I think we all know we had sold some property and um, earlier this year and so we received our missions committee received a large portion that we could that they tithe to us so that we could um, give back to our missionaries and those that we do support so we sent letters out to each of them to ask what they needed help with and they the beggar leaves very faithfully sent a letter back and uh, and I actually have a copy of it back here if anyone wants to see it but we did want to um, offer you a check today to go, I think it's for a library. Yeah. They have lots of books and they need a library to yeah. put them in. So we wanted to give you a check for $5,000 to go towards that, yeah. so. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, God bless you both. Before you leave, I'm gonna ask you all to stand and kind of do like we did last week, you know, put, we're going to lay, lay hands on Mark and Helen and uh, lift your hands out there and let's, let's, let's pray over, over them here today. Uh, uh, Father, i got to come before this morning, Lord. I just thank you for Mark and Helen. I thank you for their years of dedication and service to, to you and your kingdom around the world, God. And, and Lord, I pray that you to be faithful to them and, and I give them all of the resources and needs they need, Lord, to continue to faithfully serve you for many, many years, God. Lord, I pray that you'll be with them as he uh, finishes up his trips here in the States, visiting the churches and spending time with his family this week, Lord. I pray it'll be a, a time of good rest and relaxation and, and re, re, reigniting with, with his loved ones and with his, his supporters, God. And when he gets back to Zimbabwe, I pray to just bless the ministry there and help help the, the kingdom to grow numerically and spiritually, Lord, Lord, and just take care of Mark and Helen until we get to see them again, Lord. God, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and grace. You've shown us so many ways, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the privilege and honor we have to serve him, and I thank you for Mark and Helen's willingness to, in many ways, give up so much so that they could go and, and serve you, and I know the reward in heaven will be great because of it, God. And I just, just praise you and thank you for that. It's in your precious son's name, all of God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, God is good. All the time. All the time. Amen. God bless y'all being here this morning. And I hope you have, all have a beautiful, wonderful Thanksgiving song. I think we, Thanksgiving week. I think we've got one more song here to sing. And then we'll, uh, we'll go out and, and, and uh, be the church. Amen? Amen. So let, let, let's sing. Sing out this morning. The name, the name of the Lord, Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Your hands together. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, the Lord most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name Blessed be the name of the Lord, most high. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, most high. Have a blessed week and have a wonderful Thanksgiving.